All right. Welcome to another episodic episode of Let's Be Real with Tyler and Juan. And uh, we're here to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp and the Quantum Mania happenings of Quantum Mania. Um, it's been it's been a little bit since we've last uh, seen or talked to you guys. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks. Just so most of you have Sorry. just received your paychecks because you get paid bi-weekly. Um, yeah, so... That's that's it. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. And we had, thank we had you to for take a little break there. Um, yeah. So in the happenings of the break, what happened? Uh, what's new? Saw Quantumania. That's what's mm. new. Um, I I got to me and my wife. We binged uh, National Treasure: Edge of History. Nice. It's a good show. Uh, recommend. Five out of five. Yes, I recommend. Yeah, you know we don't do it. You know we don't do one through ten here. We do one out of five. I've been telling Juan to get on that show. It's really good. Um, if you like history, if you don't, I question you. <laughs> uh, I love history. Oh, then you should watch it. Why haven't you watched it yet? Uh, honestly, I haven't had time. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so yeah, and I guess in my time I had, um, WWE came to town, they came to Orlando. It's not so really town. I went to, that's a town. I mean, you have to drive out of town. Yeah, you gotta pass drive a few almost, towns. almost two hours away. Yeah, that's nothing. It's local, right? Yeah. I mean, for anybody outside of Orlando, that's local. All right. Um, yeah. WWE Monday Night Raw. I went there. Had, had fun time for three hours. It was a great show as well. It was a great show. Um, first time ever seeing a steel cage match in person. Did you like the steel cage match? Uh, no. It was very mid. Yes, it was. I liked the fact that Lita came out at the end. There's a reason That's she it. had to. What was that? What was the reason? I know, the match was super mid. The match was bad. Yeah, the match, the match was, was not good at all. If you're going to talk about a steel cage match, you better be getting thrown off the top. You better be getting thrown into the cage. There was not a lot of... There was not a lot of that, no. Yeah, there's been a lot of standards set with a steel cage match. Like a Triple H, Shawn Michaels, yep. uh, Mankind, Mick Foley, I mean, Undertaker, Kane. Just, I mean, you can't think of a steel cage without thinking of war games. I consider that still a steel cage match because it's... It's basically a steel cage match. Steel cage rings. match with two rings. So when you just have one on Raw, it's like, oh my gosh, that sounds great. But you guys did not. Yeah, the build up to it was it good, bad. but the match was just bad. Yeah, it made it seem like that they were gonna die. You know, they they were gonna put their lives on the line. They were gonna give us everything they had, and I just well, felt they like did. They did climb up to the top, and um, Becky. Well, Becky got pushed off, right? Yeah. Yeah, Becky got pushed off. I feel like a CCW show would have been better with a steel cage match with yep. Cha Cha Charlie. Cha Cha Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we brought up Cha Cha Charlie because Cha Cha Charlie. Cha Cha Charlie is his name like Cha Cha Charlie or is he yeah. just stuttering? No, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I never thought of that. <laughs> He's like Ch -ch -ch Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, anyways, how's the new car? Oh yeah, I bought. I a new figure car. we can talk about it. We no. can talk about it now. It's been long enough. Yeah, you didn't. It's been like three. I bought weeks. a new car. A lot earlier After than his I, car exploded. Yeah, my, with me inside it. Um, <laughs> That's how he messed his finger up. <laughs> no, that was two days before. Um, I planned on buying a car this year, but not as early as I thought. And remember, the, I remember you were talking about getting a Jeep at one point. Man, I wanted a Jeep. I we wanted both a, wanted Jeeps until we got until I got one <laughs> until I got inside of one. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "This is small." <laughs> nope, never mind. Never mind. And then I wanted a, a pickup truck. You know, and then that didn't work out. And you could have got yourself the Ford Ranger. No. Those things are nice, bro. No, they're not. What? No, they're not. Four door. They pull up to 7,700 pounds. What midsize truck is even doing that? If I was going to get a midsize truck, I would have got a Tacoma. And you should have got a Tacoma. A Tacoma. I couldn't, I couldn't afford it. A Tacoma. The circumstances beyond my control <laughs> at that time, a couple I mean, weeks ago, I couldn't afford it. I mean, just, you know. I plan on getting one in the middle of the year, and I couldn't do it. 
Like I had, I had to absolutely. Get no, when one. you become a manager at Publix, just trade your car in, even though you own it. Just trade it in for a truck. Nope, I love this car. Just buy another. Just buy I a got truck a. Then. I got a 2023 Toyota Camry SE in white. Just buy a truck then and have two vehicles. Very nice. No. Why not? What would I do with two cars? I don't know. Hey, you want to go out in the truck? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go out in the car? Yeah. 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 Hey, let's take the let's go to the beach in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you might want to get a food truck or something in the future. Just saying. You sniffing the mic right now? No. <laughs> you were like I wasn't breathing in the mic either. I was hold, I was holding my breath. Well, I breathe into this mic and I lick it because it's mine. That's gross. <laughs> Tasty. Metallic. Metallic. There you go. Nobody uses this microphone but me. So right. it's okay. But yeah, the most important episode. Episode. Actually, yeah, I would say this is like the most important episode. You know, in the recent time, because we talked about, you know. Love and Thunder. We talked about Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Yeah. Um, we started with Love and Thunder. It was our wow, first episode. We really did start yeah. with Love and Thunder, man. We did. And we're almost at 30 episodes. That's it. It's awesome. And then that's when the podcast ends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got a t- tipping time God, clock. First season ends at episode 30. Season one. I don't know. What, what if we did seasons? You think we should? Uh, No. Okay. It was worth a shot. But um, but I'm saying, yeah, our first episode ever was with Love and Thunder. Yep. And our last is with Quantumania. Nice. Yep. So, which yep. Love and Thunder was okay. Yep. Black Panther was below okay. But I don't know, man. I, wa- I rewatched that movie. Now I can hear you. I, I, re- I rewatched that movie. Which one? Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Oh, you did? I haven't watched it yet. I rewatched it, and I'm not going to change my stance on it. Like, I still give it the rating I had, which was, what, a three? Right. Out of five. Um, I just don't think any Marvel movie besides Multiverse of Madness is below a, two, a three. But after watching Quantumania, I have to... Um, wait, wait, let me let me address this first. But I've rewatched Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I don't hate it as much as I did when I first watched it. Because I, I actually rewatched it and sat down and like rewatched it for what it was. You know what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of the ways I felt, I still feel the same with a lot of things. But I was like, there was a lot of things that I enjoyed a little more about it the second time I watched it. Um, like all the deaths. Um, no, I'm kidding. But, and then watching Quantumania made me feel a lot different about Multiverse of Madness. Okay, how? Well, Loki, season one. Okay. If you think about it, when Sylvie killed He Who Remains, which is another <coughs> variant of King, which who was the last one, last pretty much the last one, because, you know, he... He stopped that multiversal war he mentioned in Loki. Yeah. She kills him. That ha- that, that that was an incursion. That which which that allowed Stephen Strange to do that um spell for Spider-Man. <clears throat> that opened up a whole new realm for that. He literally did that thing. That's Kang died before that. So he was, remember, he was at the end of time. He was the one that controlled time. Yeah. So if you think about it, he dies. Strange does that because that took place after. Boom, goes crazy. That's why Multiverse of Madness was ridiculously, like, it seemed like everything was going on at once. It makes sense that so many incursions happened. That's what that whole movie was. So it kind of made sense a little more to me after watching Ant-Man Quantumania. Um, And then now it comes back to Kang. And I I don't know. It just made me kind of like really think about it. I was like, hmm, maybe that's why the movie was like that. So many incursions happening at once. America Chavez incursioning. The Illuminati's in that movie. Just 
too many things going on at once, but it makes sense because the guy that made time stable and structured the time with the TVA just got murdered. He just got stabbed by Sylvie. Right. That's just like my little take on that. I just was thinking about that today. What do you think of that? I mean, I get what you're saying. I I don't know. I would have to. I would have to re rewatch the last episode of Loki, or the last two episodes of Loki, um, because I don't really remember too much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I would have to go and rewatch Wakanda Forever. Well, Wakanda Forever, I feel like it's it's re- it's like a real standalone movie. No, it is. It, it is. But it's still connected because they're talking about mutants, but it's also connected to... They can connect it with everything because Doctor Doom is going to end up showing up in one of these movies and he's going to end up in Wakanda in one of these other movies to get Vibranium and just... He's just... That's just how they're going to connect it. But I don't know. Yeah, I would have to rewatch, Especially watching uh, Ant-Man, I'd have to go back and, and rewatch the last two episodes of... Loki, maybe just we watched the whole show. Yeah, I I actually rewatched it two weeks ago. Um, before I watched Quantum, I watched I rewatched Loki, Multiverse of Madness, before Quantum Mania because I knew like Quantum Mania is all about multiverse and traveling and yeah, you know like incursions, yeah. mm-hmm. Multiverse of Madness, Loki is all about that. So, and then you know how it ends, but we'll talk to talk about that later. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Anything else before we move forward? Um, yeah, before we start talking about that, I went and saw uh, Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, we talked about that. No, we didn't. On our two weeks episode, like, that would happen, like... No. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. The movie ha- the movie wasn't out yet when we did that episode. You talked about how bad it was on that episode. No. Nope. I could pull it up right now. Okay, pull it up. But we didn't. Because hmm. the movie wasn't out yet. The last episode we did was uh, our most anti- anticipated movies of 2023, and that was in January. And the movie came out in February. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. Mm, yes, that's we true. talked about it. Well, Knock at the Cabin sucked, anyways. Well, that's that's what that's what you told me at least. I said, well, I said that um, it wasn't the best. But I mean, I don't know. the The message was weird. It's all about like end of time, and um, if you didn't do what um, what Batista's character and um, Robert, uh, not Robert, Rupert Grant, which is um, what's his name, Ron Weasley, in Harry Potter, if you didn't do what he said, like you, you know, you certain disasters in the world would happen like tsunamis and planes falling out of the sky and um earthquakes and uh landslides just like killing mm-hmm. all these people like if you you know what i mean if you didn't and then they would sacrifice themselves um movie, the movie was was weird and the twist was that well it's spoilers i don't want to spoil it but that that if you like M. Night Shyamalan, if you like those movies, then just go ahead and watch it and make your own opinion. But I just feel like it wasn't his best. Uh, but it definitely wasn't his worst movie. But, I mean, if you if you like M. Night Shyamalan, it's definitely a watch on, like, a rainy day. I don't know. On a rainy day? Yeah, on a rainy day. Not really watching those types of movies. It's it's definitely one of those like isolated movies. Like, it takes place in the cabin. Like, it opens in they it opens up in the cabin. Um, the daughter of the two guys are uh, she's playing outside. Matisse's character t- comes up and talks to her. And the way the camera is, it's very close up on her face and very close up on his face. So it's kind of like. It, it it gives up that feeling like you're meant to be uncomfortable. Like this is an uncomfortable situation for both of them. Mm-hmm. One for the fact that she's a little girl and this is a stranger. The other fact that he's there to fulfill a purpose, which is if they don't follow that purpose, then they are going to die. 
it's very it, the way it's the way it was shot was good. I'll give you that. the The way the movie was sh- was shot and filmed, like very wide establishing shots, a lot of things going on in the background. If you don't really pay attention, you're gonna miss. But and then especially those close ups like that, meant hmm. meant to make you feel uncomfortable. What do you rate it? Um, I would give it three stars. But it's like I said, it's one of those rainy day movies. Like you're stuck in one spot. You know, the the characters are stuck in one spot. You can kind of relate a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Knock at the cabin. Sounds like something that I will not be knocking on. (laughs) But if you guys like those movies, I would, you should just go watch it because certain movies aren't made for people. Certain people like certain movies. That's what's great about them. There's a lot of movies. Movies are like opinions, you know? Everybody got them. Everybody likes them. And not everybody... And not everybody likes them either. Exactly. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. Yep. You ready? Talk about this? Yeah. Just have one question for you. What's that? If you don't mind. We'll see. Me asking. Can I ask you a question? No. All right. Well, this episode's ending. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. This might be our most viewed episode because it's the shortest. But um, you guys have a great night. Anyways. Um, so, I just have one question for you, man. Just What's that? Real simple. Lay it on me. So, um... <laughs> what do you... How say, did what? Was it? What was what? What was the question? How did Ant Man win the Nobel Peace Prize? The Nobel Peace Prize? Mm-hmm. How? You don't want to guess? Nope. Oh man, this is boring. No, I he, mean He was brilliant. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> he was brilliant. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, no sir. ma'am. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey Peter. No, sir. So um so how do you want to do this? Because I took a bunch of notes about the movie, but in my own personal like feelings and takes about it. It's not like I just oh yeah, this, 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 this. So I might say all so, these notes I have and you might not even agree with any of them. I just want to say Uh-oh. right here at the seventeen minute fifty mark. Uh huh. From now on, it's gonna be spoilers. Sp- about I don't even I didn't even want to say anything. Quantum Mania. So if you haven't seen it, stop now. No. Nope. Go watch the movie. No, nope. keep going. And then <laughs> come back and finish the rest of the episode. Nah, man, I don't care. Keep. keep you listening. don't care about spoilers. Keep listening. See, but that, I, I don't want us to get like sued because we spoiled the movie for somebody and we didn't give them a warning. How can we get sued? Man, you can get sued for anything. You can't get sued for you can that. Get, you can break your own ankle on your own house, and someone outside your house will sue you for breaking your own ankle. You can't ankle. get sued for spoiling them. Listen to me. He has no idea what he's talking about. Listen to me. If you have not seen this movie, do not get mad at us if you continue on past this minute. Well, I'm going to say, because look, there's people like me out there that don't care about spoilers. Yes, And actually is. go find spoilers before the movie comes out. Yes, there Just are. to know. But there's a lot of people that, like me, Spoil. avoid trailers Spoiler just gang. to avoid... Getting spoiled. See, and that's a problem. So after this, you have been warned. It is no longer our fault. We are not responsible for your antenna when you go through the car wash and scene. Well, speaking of trailers, we are actually going to start reacting to trailers. Uh, so yeah. unless you want me to just react to them. Because I'll, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can literally do that. I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> just... <laughs> Hey, we can actually make that a thing. You wear like a blindfold where you're just like, yeah, oh, oh great. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at that. Yo, man, this is amazing. Oh, put some clothes on. Wow. <laughs> but but I can't, I can't react the way I want to. Like, oh, my gosh, it's this guy. No, so you can they'll put the twist in the trailers. Bro, but trailer reactions are great. People love seeing people react. I didn't see a single trailer for MN Quantumania. Well, and I was surprised throughout the whole. Did movie. you did you watch any of the uh, Man- Mandalorian trailer that's coming out? Nope. It's coming out March first. I know that. We're gonna watch that trailer. Yes, we are. Mm, I don't know, bro. How are we gonna, bro? C- dude, I'm trying to like. 
I don't want to. I don't. We can't just talk about movies and not like talk about the trailers. Like, there's so much more content out there besides just talking about the movie. Like, it's people love it. I prefer teasers. One minute, one minute and a half. That's it. If it's three minutes. That's four like minutes, a mini trailer. Yeah, but it doesn't really show. It shows you. It establishes who's in the movie. It establishes the plot. Establishes what might happen. That's it. That's it. When you go and they got like five, six minute trailers. And it's like it's I've never seen a Marvel movie with five, six minutes. I'm not talking about Marvel. That's what. Well, that's pretty much what we're going to be covering for a good while because of the movies and stuff they have coming out. I know, but I'm not talking about Marvel. I'm talking about Star Wars. Don't have five, trailers. six. I'm not talking minutes. about Star Wars. I'm talking about. But I'm telling trailers. you about movies and trailers that we're interested in watching. Are we not? Yes. So those don't have five, six minute trailers. No, but there are movies that have. Okay, there are movies that like trailer spot number one, trailer spot number two, trailer spot number three, number four, number five. Jurassic World did that, and I was five like, trailers. How many? How much more of the Wait, movie? Five trailers. Yes, that's like, too how much. much I more? feel like movies just need one trailer. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That's why. That's why I don't watch them at all because it's like, how, wh- if I watch those all, that's it. I don't need to see the movie. They, they just, let's just react to the first trailer that comes out. Then all right. Because there's and, there's the trailer that they release for YouTube, yep. then there's the trailers that they release for Instagram, which is the TikTok, same one as YouTube sometimes, and then there's the trailers for TVs, which, which the ones on the TV are the longer ones. Those are the shorter ones. Those are okay. They're that's the shorter what I meant ones, to say, and the, the ones ones. on YouTube are longer. Usually about two and a half minutes, two three yeah. minutes. Even if the, even it, even if they're that much, even if they're that long, I'm just glad that the movies that we're gonna be reacting to and reviewing aren't really. The trailers haven't been super, super long. Right. Well, Mar- what Marvel does is they, they will, do it the right way. They will record stuff. They will film stuff that is just for the trailer. Mm-hmm. And it's not even in the movie. Which is which is good. But some movies don't do that. Mm-hmm. Like take I was watching. I watched the trailer for one of the Terminator movies. And everything in the trailer was in the ago. movie. <laughs> the major twist of the movie was, was in, in the, the trailer. trailer. Like. The movie, I don't, yeah, that's not smart. That's not like so, smart. Like John, at all. Turns out, you know, if you don't watch the trailer, you'll be surprised. But if you watch the trailer, you know what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna spoil it because no one, everybody hated that movie. Uh, just, ter- just spoil um, it. That's what I'm saying. I was about to say it, but I was like, it's not a spoiler because everybody hated it. Um, <laughs> I didn't even watch it. Um, John Connor was a Terminator the whole time. <laughs> Why would you put that in the trailer? Right? That's like a major. That changes the that that changes the whole dynamic of all the Terminator movies. Mm-hmm. The whole, the whole time. He was, he was, he was a Terminator the whole time. It's like when you go watch Terminator Salvation, which is the one where they're actually in the war with Christian Bale, and and at the end, like you see, like the guy who's the main character of the movie, he's half Terminator. If they would have put that, he didn't know. And if they would have put that in the trailer, I wouldn't have wanted to go go and seen that movie. Exactly. Because that was a major. Oh, he's Terminator the whole time. Jeez, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like with certain movies, when you put the whole like plot twist in the trailer, you're just not a good producer. Or, or you know the movie's going to be bad. Yes. Well, that's that's exactly what it is. When the movie, you know the movie's not going to be that good, they put the best stuff in the trailer. Right. Which I appreciate with that with Marvel. They don't put the best stuff in the trailers. Like, like you one, said, they just film what they film stuff for the trailer. Right. Like, I saw the trailer for... Um, Infinity War and they had showed the Hulk inside the Hulk poster. That wasn't a trailer. But in the movie, it wasn't. Yep. It was Bruce Banner because Hulk was scared of Thanos. Yep. So that that's cool. It's like you look for that and does not in there. See, they do it right. That's so fine. we don't gotta worry about that stuff with them. But other movie, like Scream, I saw the I saw the short teaser for that. It set up the location and the characters, and that was it. That was a minute. That's all I need. Yep, that's enough to get you talking about that's it. That's enough to get me watching the movie. That's you got me. Knock at the cabin. That was it. <laughs> 30, 30 seconds. You got me hooked. I wanted to see it. You got me hooked. It was a 30-second trailer. You knock on the cabin, and then the two people are tied to the chairs, and it says, the world's coming to an end. We need your help. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a quite a... Hey, we're going to tie you to this chair because the world needs... We need we need help, yeah. But um, I'm eating peanut M Ms by the way. The best M Ms. You're entitled to that. They're the least sweet M Ms. You're entitled to that opinion. My favorite M Ms are the 
Or the blue ones? The blue ones? Yeah. The pretzel ones? No, just the blue m and They taste the best. The bag? No, there's no flavor. That, that's pointless. They're trying to be, they're trying to skittle the way into that. No, the colors the colors represent all the different M and M's, all the different flavor, all the different oh. flavor bag M and M's. Like well, the, the yellow guy is the peanut M and M, so he's got a yellow bag. Who's red? The red guy is the classic M and M, which is the the brown bag. Mm-hmm. The green ones are, um, it's the girl, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have a specific flavor. I think just the bag is just green. Mm-hmm. The orange M M&M, and M, that's the pretzel, but that's in the blue bag. Mm-hmm. And then there's the there's another there's a slightly darker orange one which is the caramel one, which is also in a blue bag. I don't know. They need to they need to come up with new bag colors, or just not have any other color M and M's. Just keep the yellow. And then the mini M and M's are apparently their children. That is a new way to look at life. What? Awesome. <laughs> You're eating their children. I I don't eat mini M and M's. You have. The one in the little tubes, you should shoot them as a little, kid. Imagine, could you imagine? You're just a bunch of little children in there. You're shaking it up. <laughs> just, you know, eating it. And there you go. You just murdered Eminem child. That's fine. Child's children, kids. Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, gee. <laughs> Mr. Anakin, what do we do? There's too many of them. What do we do? This is what I do. <laughs> All the younglings. <clears throat> All the younglings with like a side Emperor, of pride. Emperor Palpatine goes, hey, all right, go gather up all the children at the temple. We will train them to be Sith Lords. Um, <laughs> one problem. <laughs> <laughs> and he kills them all, which I didn't understand that. He hated all Jedis. That's what I'm saying. He wanted he wanted to train them up. Nope. And he's like, no. He hated all Jedis, so he eradicated them. <laughs> Put them in the incinerator. He carterized them, if you really think about it. <laughs> So, ready to move forward? Yep. All right, man. Ant Man and the Wasp. All right, spoiler time. Ant Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. Let me hear your thoughts. <laughs> Great. <laughs> 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 I can't look, man. I know you said you want to just go off of my notes, but I, we can't just go off the notes the whole time because it's my own like opinions. It's not like. Well, no. I mean, there's like there's like points. There's like story points that we can go off of. Really? So like the movie, I don't, I don't know about that. The movie opens up right with Scott Lang. Scott Lang. He's like walking. He's narrating him his his, his own like third person talking yeah, about himself. He's like he's like it's in his head, right? He's like narrating what he's doing. I guess kind of he's talking about his life and everything like that. And every he's going to the shops. Everybody's like happy to see him. Hey, it's Ant Man. He goes to the coffee shop. The guy thinks he's Spider Man. He's, he's like, like, hey, thank you so much, Spider Man. Yeah, have a nice day, Spider Man. <laughs> And then um, um, just hanging out. He gets a phone call, right? Um, he, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He's questioning his... He's not questioning his... He's like... He's like... He's very excited that everybody's like... Um, excited to see him and that he's a superhero and that he, saved, he helped save the world and everything like that. Then he gets a call that Cassie, his daughter... Is in prison or is in jail? Not prison, jail. There's a difference. And goes and picks her up, and then <clears throat> it turns out he oh he has his own book. He wrote a book about it, about being about being an Avenger. Yep. Is that that's it for you? I mean, that's the opening. That's the opening part of the movie. Yeah. I I I, the, I like the way they did it. It felt it didn't feel like a Marvel film in the beginning. It just felt like a regular film, like establishing. All right, this is your main character. This is the love interest. This is the daughter. You know what I mean? Like this is like the points, the most important people in his life. Um, you kind of forget that it's a Marvel film until like he's talking about saving the world, he's talking about being with the Avengers, and he's talking about um, you know, when he goes to the coffee shop, the guy calls him Spider-Man. It didn't f- the first like Two minutes didn't feel like a Marvel film. It felt just like a regular Paul Rudd film, which was cool because I like Paul Rudd. Yes, Paul Rudd is a. I like Paul Rudd. He was perfect for Ant Man, by the way. Yeah, perfect casting. You know, we didn't see we didn't see Michael Pena in this movie. I think there's a reason for that. Yeah, this was more so about Scott Lang reconnecting with as his the daughter. father, reconnecting with his daughter, and just focusing on the Pims. 
and yeah. and uh, Janet's story. Yeah, it's definitely. It wasn't even really about like Scott and uh, Scott and uh, what's her name, Hannah, I think, or Hope. Hope. Yeah, Scott and Hope, which is the Wasp. It wasn't like it didn't feel like their movie. But they're the way. superheroes. Yeah, it more it was more so like the plot was more so built around Janet, you know. Right, because Her. she spent 30 years in the quantum realm. Unf- and That unfaithful woman. Unfaithful? Yeah. What do you mean? You don't remember? She's like, yeah, me and that guy, I had to, got to know that guy. Oh. She's like, I had needs. It was 30 years. He goes, and then. <laughs> he goes, I had needs too. And then they kept calling him Hank and Henry. Yeah, I don't know why. His name is Hank Pym. But they kept saying Henry. She called, no, she's the only one that calls him Henry. So what I'm saying, but you've heard that name multiple. You heard two different names for him. Hank is like, yeah, I had needs. I had it was 30 years. I had needs too. Just didn't work out for me. Yeah. Um, but I kind of got Scott Lang had. I wrote down Scott Lang has Tony Stark vibes in this movie. He's famous and rich now. He's a typical superhero celebrity. He's been the typical father. Afraid that his daughter will follow his footsteps and try to be a version of him. And I wrote, he needs to realize that his daughter, he needs to realize that, oh, he needs to realize he needs his daughter more than anything right now. And she needs her father, Scott Lang. And then I just wrote, and then, and then I went on a rant about Janet. That, that I wrote that pretty much. That was like everything you explained. That's literally what I wrote with that. Like right. he needs her and she does need him. You go pretty. We go pretty quickly into the quantum realm here. Yeah, literally right like, after that. Like the movie. Like as soon as like they establish. Right after that, we're in the quantum realm. Right as soon as they establish some of the talking points of the movie that's going to be brought up later on throughout the f- the movie, um, we end up in the quantum realm. And Cassie ends up building up. Ends up building like this uh, probe type thing that you can send down into the quantum realm, which sends its signal. Back up to the surface. To the surface, I don't. I don't even know what to call where we are because they're, they're in the same. We're on the same planet, right? They can go to a different planet, but no, they they don't even know what Earth is. Yeah, they don't even know Earth, so I guess the surface. But um, yeah, and th- that's how um, Kang the Conqueror finds them. Was it by that signal? And then they end up getting sucked in there and they go, they fall down. She says that they are past. So there's like certain ways you can go super small, right? So there's like, if you go subatomic, you're like the same size or smaller than like the germs that we have on, you know, everywhere around us. That was, that happens in the first movie. Um, and then it also happens again in the second movie, which that's how we get Janet back from the quantum quantum realm. They end up going down there and pulling her out. But um, she, they they went past subatomic, and then we find we see that there's like a ship and everything, and then we find out there's like a whole civilization down there. There's this whole like world, and they're at war, and like it's it's crazy. Like I I didn't think there'd be other things down there they're they look like humans but they don't they don't know that they're they're not they're not technically humans but they're not aliens and they're not germs because they look like us yep it's crazy and they have you know they have the old there's like these things down there that they ride um there's this stuff made of goo you just drink the goo you can speak their language you can understand what they're saying it's pretty crazy Oh, it is crazy. I'm just going through my notes, and after I uh, I read after I wrote um, that they need each other, that's when they ended up in the quantum realm. And I I said, Janet Pym knows something and isn't telling the group for some strange reason. Only time will tell what happens in this situation. I really like how Hank Pym is trying to play the peacemaker between Hope and Janet. Something seems off with Hank and Janet in this situation. Well, they spent 30 years apart. 30 years apart. Um, 
they're still technically also that was that was during the whole thing where they're flying on that big it was like a it looked like a manta ray yeah it looked like the thing they were flying on that thing going to different destinations and then they ended up at the bar yeah that that was right around that time and bill murray shows up lord kryler bill murray lord kryler What'd you think of that? Um, he turned out to be a bad guy. He is a bad guy. He works for he. He works for he. Um. And then there was this. What did he? There was this thing that he drank, with it looked like an octopus inside it. He's like, don't. If you never had this, don't try it. Yeah. Which like no one's ever had that except for you or the people that are down there. Yeah, it had like this live little animal in it. Drank it and then he you eat the animal. Yeah, he ate it. It's just weird. I kind of got Star Wars vibes when... Uh, De- this movie definitely did that. feel like Star Wars vibes, especially when they were like... Um, At the, to when, me, the bar scene. The bar scene, but also when they were getting to the bar. Where they well, had the surroundings. Yeah, they had the they hoods had the, on. Yeah, the, the hoods on. They were trying the to The way sneak. they were riding on that thing. They had like... Mm-hmm. It was very... I mean, same same Disney owns both. So it's like, it's like oh, okay, kind of kind of gives me the Star Wars vibes. Even the background like it had like... It looked like sand. Yeah. Like, just kind of like where they were and just, it's, yeah. So, um, they fell down, but they, um, they all went in there. But Cassie and Scott are separated from Pim, Janet, I mean, Hank, Janet, and yep. Hope. Um, they're trying to find each other, but. They, uh, Cassie and Scott end up running into these, like, um, primal type people. They live out in the jungle. They have their own other civilization. They're hiding from King the Conqueror, um, which, and which hasn't come up yet. Like, you see him, um, in a flashback that, um, Janet has that, Says that you know I met somebody down here. He I left him here. Lord Cryler. What? That was Lord Cryler. No, that wasn't Lord Cryler. That was, that was what's his name? No, that's literally what who she talked about. That's the guy that she met down there mm-hmm. and left him for thirty years. That's yeah, she left him. It was Cryler. But that's not what she said in the beginning. She was talking about. She wasn't talking about Lord Cryler. She was talking about King the Conqueror. Yes, because that's the way it showed. Like he showed up. She said, what is this place? And then she, oh, said, yeah, you're, okay, then she okay. said, I left him. Left him, yes, yes. Well, she. I remember when you, well, she, she said that twice in the movie because she said that to Hank. She's like, yeah, I left this guy down here. I left him, which was Kryler referring mm-hmm. to, oh, you dated somebody? That's what, that, it, it just got easily confused with that. But yes, she escaped and came back after she left he down there or yep. him. Um, yeah, so they were, he drank, she, Cassie tells, uh, what's it, um, Scott to, uh, drink the, the ooze and they were chanting this, this thing. And then he drank the ooze and they were, what they were chanting was drink the ooze. <laughs> yeah. Drink the ooze. Drink the ooze. Yeah. I got, I like, honestly, uh, I got, like I said, I got Star Wars vibes when, uh, Scott and Cassie got saved from the group of savages in the like quantum Ewoks. realm. Jan- and I said, Janet Pym is a scrapper. And something doesn't seem right. I don't trust her. Scott drinking the ooze reminded me of Finding Nemo when they introduced Nemo to the Ring of Fire. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, Janet is the ultimate heel. She knows too much <laughs> info, and she still isn't telling Hank or Hope anything. And then I said, "This was this right now. This is at the bar. Because remember, they like went back and forth between where Scott and Cassie were. So, and then I said, uh, broccoli guy is a stalker." <laughs> I, I even told that to you in the movie. Yeah. I was like, you stalker. He, well, he comes up and he like he starts hitting on. He's like, hey. And I was like, oh, what a stalker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Kryler is weird. Cassie offering help to the Freedom Fighter is great in my opinion. But saying she shouldn't be here is was very interesting. Appa- and then this is about Janet. Apparently her leaving everyone with him has made everyone turn against her. Right. Because she was a Freedom Fighter. And then I said, she is a liar and has lots of secrets and she has kept that she has kept from her family. It seems like Lord Kryler works for him. The bar fight was epic, 
Cassie and Scott remind me of Kate Bishop and Hawkeye. It's everything we didn't know we needed. And and then I, yeah. Speaking of the bar fight, that was pretty cool. And then Hope um, hits the, she throws one of the pin particles that enlarges stuff. <laughs> it enlarges the big octopus, thing. Yeah. And it grabbed people. Oh. It was eating guys. It was, oh. Yeah, and then the quantum realm is the only place where buildings have life. <laughs> yeah. It was like, your building's alive? And he's Wait, like, you're, yours are dead? Yours are dead. <laughs> well, the move, that, that little thing. I don't know what his, what his name is, but that gives people the ooze. He's like, you just drank me. I think it has something to do with the ooze. Yeah, he is the ooze. And he's like, you just drank me. But what did you think about like... But it was, I thought it was funny. It was like, the guy that can read minds. Oh, that was good. That was good. He came up. He's like, stop thinking that. Yeah. Stop thinking that. I like the little, the, the little thing asked Scott. Like, it went into your hole. He's like, how many holes do you have? And then goes, <laughs> the guy that read mine goes, he has seven holes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the guy that can read minds, that's pretty cool. That's like. That's a that's a blessing and a curse kind of power to have, because yeah. you get to know what people are thinking, especially if what they're thinking of you, but then you can also hear everybody else's thoughts, whether they're perverted or, you know, mon- maniacal. Could whatever. you imagine that? Just hearing all the thoughts of your coworkers. Oh man, <laughs> you'd just be like, "Dang, really? That's I, how you feel too." I, I really get to know how much they hate me. You're like, "Wow, really? Dang, interesting." But though it's easy to find out if someone has a crush on you, though. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> it's funny you bring that up. Why you brought that up? Huh? Why'd you bring that up? Because that's where everybody's mind's gonna go. So yeah. They're gonna go. Do they want to kill this place or do they love me? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, love me. <laughs> <laughs> love a girl. Okay. Love a girl. What's next? Oh, I mean. I put uh, the quantum realm is the only place where buildings have life, and I uh, we've met Modok already at this point. Yeah, you were like, I want to see the guy with the big floating head. I was like, who's that? Well, yeah, because uh, there was rumors that Modok would be in there, um, and it's sad, you know, Modok did but, die in the movie. But I didn't know who that was. Who yeah, you ever seen like the big like the Mo- MCU po- the Mo- Avenger posters, and you got that guy floating with the big like head? That's Modok. Okay. Um, which turns out to be. He ends up being like being a good guy. No, but it was the guy Darren, Darren from the first movie who had the B suit, which was a uh, Pim's protege. Right, he had the B suit. I don't remember him getting decapitated in that movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. I probably just missed that part or just blocked it out. But at the time when we saw Modok, I was like, man, this dude's a really good villain. Like, he would make a really good bu- villain. And I said, uh, Modok is amazing. Finally, we see another villain that will make the MCU better. I like when um, he's sitting... It looks like he's sitting in a chair, right? Floating mm-hmm. around. And then he's like... "Oh, you, uh, Scott goes, oh, you got baby legs. And he looks down and his legs go up. He's like, I don't have baby legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, remember, the thing about Modok is... Modok is the one that brought Scott and the group to the Quantum Realm for Yeah, he him. found he found the signal. And yeah, he's the, he's the one that sent the signal out for him. Yeah. Um, and then I put Kang is what he needs to be and him telling Janet that she saved his life was a great way to show his true colors, how manipulative Kang is. Very. She didn't know what he was actually capable of until she was helping him rebuild his ship. He said he crashed here. He was traveling, but that's not very, that's not true. Once she touched the core which powers the ship. She saw everything that he did. He was actually banished to the quantum realm with no way of getting out. But the only way he could get out is if he fixed that, if he fixed the core. But he didn't know how, so he was trapped. Luckily, Janet was a, was probably <clears throat> one of the best scientists on Earth in her time Yep, and was able to help him Oh, yeah. It. Yes. But when she saw everything, she kind of, she sabotaged it. She enlarged the thing. She enlarged the core, ma- like 
50 times its size mm-hmm. and which trapped him there again and then right after that he was chasing her she was he was trying to kill her or at least trying to like enslave her and to help like fixing it again but then that's when she got pulled out by Scott yep in the in the previous movie yeah <clears throat> i thought it was cool when uh um <laughs> The little war they had at the end was really cool. Uh, when the the freedom fighters or the savages, um, that's what I just call them the savages before that, I that's found what, out that they were freedom that's what fighters. They, yeah, remember when they helped them escape from uh, the jail and then the ooze ran out in front of the bullets and he started getting shot. Like, ah! <laughs> he's like, he's like, I have holes, I have holes. He like Kirby's everybody. Bro, like, I'm not gonna lie, that was a little creepy. I was like, whoa, what the freak? Yeah, he became like Kirby from like. Um, from Nintendo. He's like, and they're like, I didn't know he could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and and then Cassie uh, figuring out how to enlarge her body to be as big as, like, same size as her dad. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I liked seeing her running when she was tiny. It was funny. And then when she's big. She's like, I'm so hungry. Yeah. I could eat everything. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Um, also, when they went, I love. He, he was trying to tell her. Scott was trying to tell her, like, you have to like get your timing down right. You have to like, you have to like push a button and like jab at the same time for it to work. Because, you know, he, his thing is, he'll get small, go behind him, and then get big and punch him at the same time, and then go back to being small again. She was trying to do that, and she kept missing her timing. So she would either, she would either get small and try to jump and hit him, or she would try and jump and hit him, and then afterwards. After she failed to get big again. Yeah. It, so. it, I really like seeing the character development with the superhero, like her being like a hero. Um, What? <laughs> what? Savannah just being Savannah. What did she say? She replied, to our, she replied to our Instagram story. My friend saw without me. Bro, she was literally invited bro, and listen, said no. Sav- listen, listen Savannah, Savannah. This you got to make this a clip. Savannah, listen to here. <laughs> listen to here. We <laughs> we invited you to go to the. What the heck? What just I, happened? You can't. Can you hear me? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait wait wait. Oh, you came you came unplugged. Oh, th- there we go. Your ears are done. Savannah, <laughs> we invited you to come out to the movies with us. And you said, no, I got other things to do, which we respectfully said, all right, no problem, because you mentioned your mother. Yes. And we were just like, all right, respectfully, when mothers are involved, we don't want to even get mad. That's it. So how are you going to get mad about that? Yeah. You know what, man? Like, <sighs> anyways, before we were rudely interrupted by Savannah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Her, her, like, going through the development of becoming a hero. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the whole Miles Morales. Oh, yeah. In the Spider-Verse mo- movie. I like that movie. Very, like, kid-like and just not... He kept sticking to everything and messing up everything. He's like, you just got to relax. You got to relax your mind. You got to think about something. Her, it's... She's really trying to get this timing down and it's just to watch their struggle. And, I'm like, man, just to... Just to she has a Miles suit Morales. as well. Yes, she does. Which is cool. It's It's... It's black and purple. And her dad didn't know about it right away. No, because he wouldn't have he wouldn't have wanted her to have a suit because, like, I mean, not saying that they, not saying that Hope and, and Scott have powers other than the pin particles, but what I want to ask, he, I want to, she hasn't been properly trained, and you know, I want to see if we're on the same page here. Which version of Scott Lang was your favorite in this movie? <laughs> oh, when <laughs> my my favorite one. Was the Baskin Robbins one? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm like Baskin Robbins, Baskin I mean, Robbins. He's Scott like Lang his name was. Did you need his name tag said Jack? Yeah, it did. <laughs> and then you hear somebody way far away. Do you have a, does he have a shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> like just he's the, like, why are you dressed like that? What do you mean? This is my uniform. I work at Baskin Robbins. Just the fact that he do showed you have up. A just the fact that he showed up as Baskin Robbins, Scott Lang. <laughs> that was a pretty cool scene. It was. All, all everybody started fl- freaking out and they started dying and he just made it back. Um, yeah, I thought. Oh no! But the, I thought that was really cool. But him and Kang ended up having like a deal. Remember? Yeah. He helps Kang and 
he's he keeps his daughter alive or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Kang kind of goes against that deal. Mm-hmm. He's like, we had a deal. Oh, your daughter will be fine without you. You know? But, um, yeah, so what, what so else? So he gets trapped, right? Kang gets trapped inside his device. Yeah, we're not even there yet. Oh. We're, uh, I mean, there's so much more to talk about. I mean, I wrote right here. I said, I love how Kang, this was, a. Uh, this is, I think this is when he just, remember he approached them before all this other stuff happened. He said, I love how he told Janet he is going to win. Just like in Loki. Remember Loki? He was like, you either, you either keep me alive and we just stay here or you kill me and I'll end up back here again. I'm all just, of his variants. Well, he's just saying, I'll end up back here again, just like he did last time. And that means he's always just going to win. So when he said "I'm," he's going to win, um, and then also him saying time isn't what you think is deep because of the context that yeah. he said it in. And that made me think about Loki. That made me think about Multiverse of Madness. Just all that was about time. And then because of Janet, lots and lots of people died. Remember that? <clears throat> when she stayed there for 30 years, people died. People did die. Because of Kang. She's the ultimate heel. But, continue, my friend. Um, a bunch of stuff, like, popped in my head. Like what? We were just talking, like... Going back to the beginning when he was narrating. I don't know if it was the beginning or the end. Oh, no, it was the beginning. He was talking about his book. When he got... when In, in Endgame, when they were trying to figure out time travel and Hulk turning him into a baby. He's like, yeah, and Hulk turned me into a baby. Does that make me his baby? Am I the Hulk's baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that fourth wall stuff is awesome. Um, but um, you want to go get more into like the end? Yeah. We're talking about um so and this time Modoc is literally following around Cassie this whole time trying to kill her. Remember that? And yeah. when they were all fighting so, at the end. Um Modoc traps Cassie and Scott and that's when Kang shows up and offers oh, that one was really good. Offers um Scott the deal, you know, like if you help me, Cassie's alive or you know what I mean, or I'll kill her if you don't help me, whatever. He starts he starts to torture her a little bit and also torturing Scott at the same time. And he's like, "All right, I'll 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 help you as long as she's as long as you don't harm her." Yeah, and then he that's when he deal. went to that uh That's when they go, he jumps inside the where the original crash happened, like the explosion where him and Janet were. Right. He jumps inside there. That's when we see all the different <clears throat> Basket Scott. Robbins. That's when we see all the different Scots with their possibilities. You got ice cream? They're they're all the they're all possibilities of all of all the um, decisions that he could make or could have made, and then how the result was going to happen. Like, if he got big, he would get shredded. Um, if he went too small, he would get stepped on, you know, by the other possibilities. Um, so he just remained normal. And then, yeah, he remained normal, and then you have to remain calm. If you panic, you also die, and then. You know, you'd be looking for ice cream. <laughs> hey, you got ice cream? <laughs> and after that, he got what he needed. Yep, and then... He went um, back to Kang. So, Kang took Cassie after Hope went and saved Scott. Like, Yep. Um, That's right, she did jump in there and save him. Yes. Um. Oh, and I liked how he was trying to reach Darren. He's like, Darren, can you hear me? Darren? Modoc. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. D- Darren was a funny villain. Even <laughs> I, 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 I hate that he died. Yeah, but, but I mean, there, after that, there's really nothing for him to do. But because I mean, Modok though was it was he was, I enjoyed Modok a lot. Yeah, he's like Darren, Modok. Yeah, <laughs> that, that I just really thought that was uh, your your petty funny villain, but he died a hero. <laughs> He did. That's why I guess he, he didn't needed, go out as a D word. That's why he needed to die because 
he didn't remain a villain. Remember the he, <laughs> yeah. I hey, remember. don't be a. D- <laughs> my name's Darren, and I'm not a. D- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that was clever. That was clever. But yeah, we're getting to the end of the movie. Yeah, we are. Um. They had that battle. There's a with big fight. Kang on the bridge. Um. The ants came back. Oh yeah, the ants. So the ants came back. They lived. He said they lived a thousand lifetimes. Yeah. And they built their own colonies, and they had like yeah, he ended up. They built their own technologies. They're they, so that's what that signal was that Hank kiss kept. He kept saying. hearing like, he kept hearing all these things. You know what I mean? And there were the ants like reaching out to him trying to find him, and they were massive. Um. And um, they had like armor on, and techno- they had like all the different technology. They had their own ships and stuff. That was pretty cool. And then they took Kang away. The ants did. They, they did. Yeah, they carried him away. I was like, oh man, dang, he didn't die. No, he didn't. <laughs> he technically die. didn't die in the movie, anyways. He, I thought he got trapped. Yeah, he he went back into his own device. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He didn't die. Like he wasn't murdered. He wasn't like killed. He was not yeah. defeated in battle. It was. But he so Scott got really big. Started coming through and like breaking, like Kang's like city that he built, citadel that he built. Yeah. He's like knocking stuff over, and then you know Cassie gets real big, and she she breaks out. She gets real small. She breaks out. She helps break out the the other chick. Um, yeah, the what's her fighters. name? I don't know her name. It starts with like an S or something like that. Anyway. Um, we'll just call her Savannah. She breaks her out and um, um, they start fighting. But then she gets real small and escapes. And then she gets really big and starts breaking stuff too. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really cool. Um, and then Kang and Scott, like, they fight each other. Right? Or, is this, am I, or did I just jump? You kind of jump because there was like a little like. They, the ants got t- the ants took Kang away. That and then they went and saw Modok. Oh yeah, and then they and tried then to died. go home. Modok died. Right, Modok died. They were in that area, and then to go home, and they then opened up the. Cassie went through. Hank went through. Yeah, they opened up a small portal. And Janet went through and the portal. Janet went through. And then Hope went through as well. Yes. Yeah. So it was only Scott. Scott there. didn't go through because Kang stopped him. Kang stopped him. And I, mean, I thought, I was like, man, Ant-Man's about to die. Yeah, because, like, Kang is real strong. Bro, Kang was... But Ant-Man, like, he he fought along with Avengers. He fought along with Thor and Captain America. And Captain America probably taught him how to fight because Captain America used to be a, a boxer in the 30s. Man, Kang the Conqueror. I was like, this is it. If Scott, If this is where Scott Lang was supposed to die, this is perfect right here. Dying in the honor of trying to fight for his family keep them alive but right as you think scott's gonna die or kang's gonna run through the portal and this was a good fight yeah scott was on the ground and then he's about and then uh kang is about to break through the portal hope blasts him through the portal through the portal and then she ends up back in there blasts him again keeps blasting him and blasting him scott's just watching it and then he eventually gets pinned against his device yep and then he ends up being taken in. He ends up going into his device, like literally. Right, but that's not the final. That's that's not the final version of Kang. No, I know it's not. Uh, I know. I'm just saying. Like I'm just yeah, establishing, yeah. Like you know, we... well, it's the only version right now. Because I remember after Kang died in Loki, it kind of restarts the whole timeline with Kang. Mm-hmm. He, he controls time. His whole thing is crazy. He was he was the he was at the end of time in Loki. Right. And he said to them, "Hey, you kill me now, I'll just end up back here anyways." And then he said, "See you soon." And then the first variant of Kang we see is Kang the Conqueror. So, his powers are cool. He goes, "Uh and then like bro. everything blows up around him. <sighs> bro, oh my gosh. What what's the guy's name? Jonathan. What the actor? 
Oh, I don't know. Franco, Jonathan something. Not Myers. The dude got, is a great actor. Um, I just want to know your final thoughts on the movie. Uh, yeah, Jonathan Majors. Yeah, Jonathan Majors, bro. Amazing job. But what is your what are your thoughts on this movie? Your final thoughts on the movie? Not asking for a rating, just your final thoughts. I thought the movie was good. No, on the uh, no, like the final thoughts, like towards like just the ending. What do you mean? What do you mean? Your final thoughts on the ending, like to close out, like just the closing out of the movie. I thought it was good. Um, he they went back to narrating, but this time he was a little more concerned because he's like he said if I was to kill him like, I would be killing the world like basically he's like did I just did I just kill the whole world nah yeah, I'll be fine cause <laughs> Kang, Kang just Kang did say something that about something like that like a yeah. war that's gonna be bad it's gonna be just as worse as everything else right but my thoughts were uh, Kang is the new Thanos I love how good of a manipulator Kang the Conqueror is Hank found his ants in the quantum realm this is what Bugs Life should have been like. <laughs> Kang is still alive. He's the MCU's greatest villain so far. I'm all in on Kang. That's that's that was literally the last thing I wrote at the end of the movie. He's the greatest villain so far. I'm all in on Kang. I think for me, it's too early for me to say something like Dude, that. But seeing him in Loki as a different version and then him. This Kang the Conqueror is like him and his like, um, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like him seeing him as Kang the Conqueror uh-huh. is like Superman going rogue. You know what I'm saying? Like just that type of power. Yeah. Um, which I really appreciated. And then the end credits. What did you? We what? got two. We got a a, a mid credit scene and we got a post credit scene. The, the mid, mid which the mid credit scene was. Oh, the one about his uh, other variants. Yes. It was about King's other variants. There was thousands of different variants. They thousands. all look just like him, too. Well, yeah. They were, it's just crazy. Like, there's a, but there's only a couple where, like, you can tell it's him, but they look a little different. Like, there's the Egyptian one. There's, like, the the the, the Mongolian one. There's, like... There's all these different type of ones. This Kang Dynasty. There's one that has glasses, and then there's remember, a, yeah, tw- what twenty twenty six, the Kang Dynasty is coming out. That's that movie, and that's uh, this I'm a, I'll just say it, this was a perfect start for this next phase of Marvel, and leading up to that because this this I kind of resurrected Marvel right now. That's how I feel. Because the last two movies, they were like, eh. Yeah. This like was like, okay, cool. Yeah, the Star Phase 5, I thought this was pretty solid. Marvel, yeah, they... they the theater was packed. It was. Ours, ours was sold out. So, any anything else before we give these beautiful people a rating on this movie? Um, The, the, the post credit scene. The second one. It opens up with Loki. With Mobius and Loki. Loki and then um, Lightning Queen. <laughs> wow. <coughs> um, Kachow. And then there's what? What was his name? Uh, the Jonathan name? Majors. No, 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 the magician. Well, I know it was it was Kang. It was Kang. It was a variant of Kang, but he was a magician in whatever time period it was. It was it was an older time period. It was probably like um, I don't know, forties, fifties, maybe maybe even before that. Um, but they're like, oh, there he is. That's him. You know what I mean? So that's going to set up Loki season two and then the next Marvel movies to come. <coughs> you looking it up? Yeah, I just want to see the guy's name. You just type in uh, Ant-Man, Quantum Mania. That's what I did. And credit scene. That's what I did. Victor Timely. Victor Timely is a magician's name. And he, he is yet another time travel identity of Kang. Yep. 
In the scene, Victor ex- is explaining how time shapes everyone's lives, but it might be possible to shape it in return. Because you've seen it. Mm-hmm. You don't how you you you, you kind of wonder how much has he seen at that point. Like, has he gone back or has he gone forward? Has he been all the way to the end of time? Technically. Or has he, like, this, I mean, this version of, the magician version of, well, oh, has Victor he Timely. seen, like, everything? Or what What has he seen? Or maybe was he visited by one of the other versions of himself and was like, hey, if you do this, you can be this. You know what I mean? Yeah. We would have to find, we have to wait till season well, two of Loki for that, for to well, find out. He, he who remains is the one that was at the end of time. Is that the final version of King? Well, or is that just well, one you, of Well, if you hear how he many. spoke, yeah. he said, I ended the multiversal war. He which, who, we're, which just now we are just starting to get into the multiverse. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's like, it's it's pretty much like, like I said, that's why it, it, it's like they wrote it like, he's like, I ended the multiversal war and it's just doing this again. Just going back. Because he said, I will end up here again. And then you see like, when they killed him, you see all the timelines like splitting at the end of like Loki season two, like yeah. all the different timelines. Everything, splitting. nothing was, <clears throat> everything was out of order. There was no structure. And that's what Kang did with the TVA. He made the TVA. Right. So now him and the TVA are no more because timeline, everything, everything's crazy. Everything split. Everything is its own. Right. So that, and that's what started the multiversal war. Are you okay? It's mirrored. So when I do this, I feel like I don't have an yeah. arm. But um, so what? What is your? What what do you, what are your like what what not your rating yet? But like, what is your thoughts and you know how like uh, how are you thinking about these other movies coming out in Phase Five? I don't even know what's next. <laughs> I don't even know what's the next Marvel movie. Really. I don't. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 comes out in May. Okay. But I don't think that... They're looking for Gamora, right? Yeah. I mean, they're looking... Which I mean, they they're showed not, Gamora in the trailer, in the theater. But that's that's the other version of Gamora. Yeah, I know, but they still show Gamora. Yeah, but they're look, he's looking for the one that... Yeah, yeah, he's looking for the real Gamora. He's not the real Gamora. He's looking for the Gamora that he fell in love with. The real Gamora. He's... That's what I mean by that. That Gamora, the other the Gamora is the real Gamora that's there, but I know you know what I mean. No. The original Gamora. That's the original the Gamora. The OG. Okay. Original Gamora. OG. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the OGG. OGGG. Um Yeah, bro. We have um Oh man, I'm sorry. Whoops. Don't you see boy? Well, go ahead. What were you guys saying? I mean, I don't know. Um, I want to know. I want to see more of like this, like continuation of like Kang and timelines and manias. <laughs> well, you're gonna get Loki season two in summer, this summer. Okay, so which that's gonna you're gonna that. you're gonna see Kang because it start the Loki started. They literally that I think that end credit scene was just a like a teaser for Loki season two. Yeah, like that that that's that's connecting it right there. Um, but yeah, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Quantum Mania just show we just watched that. Then they have Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Well, what if is going to be coming out this another another season of what if? I haven't seen the first one. Uh, Secret Invasion's coming out in spring. Okay. I think that's a show, right? Yeah. And then you got Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. May fifth. Loki, season it's going to be, and then you got Echo. Remember that was the deaf girl in Hawkeye. Oh, that's her. Fought she fought with the tracksuit gang. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Yeah, I love in that. June, the but Marvels. That's, that's that's not in the MCU. It, it's not, but it is. It's not. 
It's not, but it is. It is not in the MCU. No, it, it no, it, it it connected. No, all everything now is you know, bro. The whole time thing, everything connects now. No, but that that one doesn't because that's a Sony. That's a Sony product. I mean, I I, li- I literally looked MCU. I know, but and this came up, so I'm just reading off a list. It's I not know. what I think. I'm just I'm, saying, like, but I'm just telling you that's a that's a Sony. Well, you're gonna have to email Forbes. dot com. I will. So and then because that's that's a Sony in house project. So that so are you gonna tell me with that logic that all the new Spider Man movies with Tom Holland is not in the MCU? No, because that the Tom Holland ones are owned by Disney and Marvel. But they're shot by Sony. Mm, right? No, they're shot by Marvel Studios. It's just the character is owned by Sony. The other two are owned by Sony. Well, no, the character Spider Man is owned by Sony. Right. That's they're, what I meant. Yeah. Tom Holland, they're just borrowing him. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure. Yeah. You got the Marvels in June, Iron Heart. This fall, Craven the Hunter, remember that? Mm-hmm. We're going to have X-Men, Agatha, Winter 2023 or beginning of the 2024. X-Men, the X-Men one is a show. Yeah, I know. And then you got uh, Daredevil in 2024. Nice. Captain America, New World Order, 2024. Thunderbolts, 2024. Blade is in 2024. I think it ends with Blade. I don't think it ends with Blade. Well, Phase 5. I think Phase 5 ends sometime next year. 2024. Yeah. Because they've already, they've already announced all the movies for Phase 7 and 8. It's going into 2030. Yeah, it is. That's a long time. I mean, I guess the they only way... since 2012. I mean, I guess the only way to find out... Blade might end end phase five. It might. It might. Yeah, because 2025 is the first movie in 2025 is going to be. Well, it says you'll have Fantastic Four, Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars. I gotta look it up. There's this one's not that good, but yeah. So there's some good stuff, and then you got Mandalorian and stuff coming out too. Yeah. So, so are you are you hopeful for this phase that it's gonna redeem MCU? Yeah, I am. It better. Yeah. It better redeem it. So, what would you rate this movie? I would give this movie four stars. Four. I really enjoyed it. I'm right there with you. Four stars. If Kang would have killed Scott Lang, it would have been five for me. Yeah. I just felt like that would have made the movie over the top. And over it the top. It's over the up. That's a Sylvester Stallone movie. It's a truck driver, and they arm, he arm wrestles. Interesting. <laughs> Always combat with this guy, with his hands. He, he's, a, he's a fighter. He's a handyman. Speaking of Sylvester Stallone in combat... Creed 3. Yeah, Creed Comes 3. Out next month. Still got to watch the first two. Mm. They're good. They're just boxing movies. Yeah. And uh, if if they're anything like Rocky, I can I can predict how the movies are going to go. Yeah. So yeah, four stars. I recommend anybody go watch this movie. It's great. Honestly. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. One of the better MCU movies. Can you look up since it's Monday, can you look up the the box office numbers for opening weekend for uh, domestic? Domestic violence? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> there's, there's two. There's, there's domestic, which is us, and then there's like the worldwide, which is like worldwide release. It's got to be in the millions already. Couple mi- couple million. Last I read, it was like 14 million. Yeah. So that, that's quite a couple. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania opened with 104 million in domestic ticket sales. Opened. That's okay. our, us buying them, like ticket sales, like us, right? Yeah. So, um, according to studio estimates, Sunday easily surpassing the box office debuts of the previous two Ant-Man films, Disney's Quantumania added another 121.3 million overseas to give 
the pint-sized hero a two hundred and twenty-five million global launch for opening weekend. That's 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 crazy. Because like I I was wondering what was that, what what was the numbers? Because like it was packed. Like even all the way down, it tops the very the box first office. like row. Like it was like sold out. Yeah, it says right here. And we got the eight p.m. showing. It says eight man Ant Man three Quantum Mania tops box office with a hundred four million first weekend. That's crazy. Because like we got the eight p.m. showing, but if you go on. If you went on the website to buy the tickets, there was there was an 8 p.m., 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, All of 30, those were 12, booked. 30. I know all those were booked. Yeah, even like even to like the final one, which was like midnight and a half, which was 12.30. Like, all of them were booked. Man, all of them were probably sold out. And they started... So for certain movies, they'll open the theater a lot earlier. Like the very first ticket you could buy was like 9.30 in the morning. And I'm pretty sure that was sold out, because people people ask take off for work, or they'll go switch their movies. schedule to work later. Yeah, like it's crazy. It was well worth it. It was. I, I, I enjoyed it. Movie was great. Four out of four stars for me. Four, I mean, four out of five stars. Four out of four. Hey man, that's perfect. Score. Four out of five stars for me. Recommend you go watch it. Please go watch it. Um. Yeah, and thank you guys for subscribing, liking, Hold on now. commenting, and everything. Hold on now. What? I was at the I was at the, the store the other day, and I thought of this or that. Oh. Well, hit me with it. All right, you ready? Oh, I be, it better be a good one. All right. It better be better than Savannah's. Gummy bears uh, or gummy worms? Uh, <sighs> sour gummy worms or regular? Well, no, hold on. There's, I don't think there's any sour gummy bears. No, I said, that's what I'm saying. Sour gummy worms or regular? Regular. Over gummy bears? Yeah. I'm going gummy worms. Me too. Sour gummy worms or sour Skittles? Sour gummy worms. Yeah. Bro, I, lo- I love my, my, I love the blue. Yeah, the, the blue. The, the blues, the, the sour blue with the with the red. Mm-hmm. Or, um, yeah. Elite candy. Those are the best. Candy's not chocolate. And chocolate is not candy. We've already established this. Candy. This is this is candy coated chocolate. Ah! It's candy coated chocolate. C C C triple C. Candy coated chocolate. So yeah, you heard it here first. Gummy worms over gummy bears and sour gummy worms over sour Skittles. Or sour patch kids. Yep, and those two. Yep. And then patchy kids, sour attitudes. First they're sour, then they're sweet. They're never. And they sweet. get stuck in your teeth. So yeah, thank you guys again for tuning in, subscribing, liking, commenting. We it, it was a it was a weird two weeks. Uh, it, I think it was good to take these two weeks off. But next time we do this, we'll let you guys know when we take a week off. Um, but yeah, yeah, just circumstances, yeah, things just, just happening. It just it was. But yeah, you guys will get more from us weekly. Uh, weekly, um, you know, our regular schedule like we were. Um, but yeah, go watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Let us know what you think. Let us know in the comments section, um, uh, what you thought about the movie. Cause we'd love to converse with you. Yeah. And, uh, if you're going to be commenting about the movie, you know, I know we went spoiler heavy in this episode, but spoil it in the beginning of the movie, if you know, just be civilized about it. Just, just, just be simple. Comment your star rating. Comment your thoughts. Comment your stars. You can't tell them to comment their thoughts and not. Tell you can, them you that can comment can. your thoughts without spoiling the movie. You can be like, I didn't like it, or you can be like, I liked it. Well, Those if, I, if they say I didn't like it, I'm gonna say, Why didn't you like it? And they're gonna spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much. You guys have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to episode twenty seven. Twenty seven. We're. Three more till 30, so Three more till 30. thank you guys for jumping on this journey with us. And next uh, Marvel movie will be um, Guardians of the Galaxy, but we're going to be reviewing Mandalorian as well. So we will uh, see you guys soon. It's going to be very See you next week. Marvel. You guys have a great night. And always remember, let's be real, man. Just always be real. Be true to yourself. 
And uh, it's fine. I'm fine. We're fine. Good night.